Okay, so here we're back again with the Caribbean Heritage TV Nick and Nick World Media Production. And uh, we are here, have, we have just a few questions for uh, our following officers here. Um, and Mr. Um, Officer McGlenn, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to um, ask you, what are some of the, I would say, you would say the challenges you think that uh, it would bring some, this, this organization would bring like to some of the youth? Well, this, uh, this organization is great because they have an open door policy with us and pretty much they allow us to come in here. We come in here with uh, youth groups and we have a, uh, what's the organization called again? The uh, youth, leadership youth, youth Leadership Program. And uh, we have an open forum. It's like a town hall meeting for the kids. Okay. And they discuss various topics and everything. And Mark has, uh, has opened up the door for us to allow, allow all the, um, the precincts of Brooklyn South to bring these, uh, these children here for the Youth Leadership Program. So he's actually, it's, it's, it's great. It's eye-opening. And you want to hear what the kids have to say because they're our future. Yes, absolutely. And how, do, do they have access? How access do they have? How often do they have access to come here? And, and, and we have the meeting at least once a month. Once a month. Once okay. a month we have the meeting here. Yes. He actually has the stores open on the weekend. He actually has the kids to come in. They can paint. They do a lot of arts and crafts. Um, we actually did the the bathroom for him. The kids did the bathroom for him when we first when he first opened. So yeah, he does good by the by the community. He does. What is it that we here doing here today, and what is a little bit more about the honoring? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. The honor, honoring for uh, for us means a, a great deal because uh, it, it actually shows that people appreciate the the work that we do, right. Officer Benjamin and myself and the 63rd Priest, and where we try and go out there every single day and, and make our make our city safer for everybody. Because right. after all, we do live in the city that we work in, so we want to make it nice and safe. And the bridge, we've been working with the bridge uh, since before it was open. Okay. So okay. We, we actually have a lot of history with them, and uh, and this honor tonight um, that we're getting from them means a lot. Now, Officer Benjamin, <laughs> Benjamin uh, what are some of the things you would say this will uh, impact the community as far as uh, their, their work that they've done in the past? Well, actually the Bridge Multicultural Center was actually built to bring different, I would say different communities and different groups of people together as one. This, this is like one central place where different cultures can come together and be just themselves. So we want to thank you. Thank you very much for all the work that you do. Yeah, very much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, as far as in New York City, because we went uh, it's going to be a tough place. Yes. <laughs> to, to, to be around. But you guys are doing a fabulous and awesome job. We also want to thank you for your services. Thank, thank, you, thank, you, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you. This is our New York City police officers. New York City. You moved us with very special words when you talked about that all of our blood are flowing the same. All of us, all races, we all have the same blood that flow through our veins and we have to work together. You touched us at the bridge, you touched me personally, and you're going to be here presenting your award to the New York City Police Department and to Captain Burke from the 63rd Precinct and his community of your police officers, Benjamin and McMahon. Thank you. The bridge represents the path that brings us all together. It's the ties that bind all of us. And today, all of us, we are one. I am Yemenese. I am Egyptian. I am Pakistani. I am Jewish. I am Haitian. I am Jamaican. I am African American. I am gay. I am Muslim, we are one. And today, all of New York cry, because today, as we celebrated earlier, or we recognized earlier, a year ago today, we lost two heroes, and that word is often used, overused, and in fact, abused. A hero is someone who walks into a place where most people dare not go. A hero is someone who puts on a uniform each and every day and a badge over their heart. The members of NYPD are heroes and sheroes, and all of you need to give them a round of applause. Yeah. We lost two heroes. We lost four this year, but today, a year ago today, two was slain, cut down murdered in Brooklyn on our streets simply because they wore blue. 
And so all of us should take a moment of silence, particularly during this holiday. Families that will not have a father to come home to. Wives who will not have a husband to hug. And mothers and fathers who will not have children that they can call on and rely upon. Two officers who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that all of us could be safe. If you do nothing else this season, this holiday, this Advent period, if you do nothing else, just join with me in a moment of silence okay. for Officer Rue, Officer Ramos, Officer Lou, and let's not forget Officer Holder and Officer Moore. And in fact, all of them have been promoted posthumously. They are now detectives in the greatest place, patrolling the greatest place, and they're in heaven. A moment of silence, please join me. Thank you. As we hear this silence, we have a time to reflect on all that they do. And so I have the honor and privilege of presenting to the 63rd Police Precinct. If you love the 63rd Police Precinct, now you make some noise. That was the most shipping of the money. Right, exactly, exactly. I, he belongs to the borough prison. <laughs> <laughs> I have the honor and privilege because I am a public advocate of the city of New York because of all of you, because of Brooklyn. I present to the 63rd Police Pre Precinct under the commanding leadership of Captain Thomas Burke. Everyone say 63! 63! 63! And to the community affairs officers who we see the most. We know their names, we call on them. They serve seniors, they serve children, they hold your hands, they are there for you. They are the most visible faces of NYPD in the 63rd Precinct. And it's an honor and privilege also to have two women. No, no, no. Come on, girl power, let's go! Come on! Okay, and to the male officer, yes, yes, yes. Yes, girls, do rock, that's right. Yeah. And so I present to Officers Benjamin, McClinton, Pascal, and Rourke, Rourke, this wonderful award, and it reads as follows. To the Community Affairs Police Officers Benjamin and McLean, in recognition of their dedicated police services that maintain the safety and security of our diverse communities. It's presented on December 20th, December 20th, 2015, by the gentleman who has brought us all here together, who recognizes that we are one. Mark Meyer Appel. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause. Get me in there. 
with uh, Ms. Hafida Torres. Hafida Torres and she's going to tell us a little bit about what is it that she do. Okay. Yeah, my name is Hafida Torres like I said. I'm the president of the Moroccan American Council to Empower Women organization based on Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. I'm one of the founder of the Moroccan American House Association in Bay Ridge and uh, I'm one of the co-founder of the Moroccan American Competencies Network organization. I've been working with the community uh, for 17 years or 18 years. Yes, uh, since I, I came to uh, to New York and in, in Brooklyn specifically, um, you know everything uh, related to the community. I always find myself uh, rushing and uh, ready to do it in terms of helping. Uh, people, newcomers to uh, New York or to America, um, showing them, direct them to the right place to get the right things, uh, such as their social security card, uh, going back to school. Uh, for people that don't speak good English, we uh, try to get them the ESL programs, uh, try to help them adjust to the new culture and um, help them alleviate that uh, culture shock. Yes. Okay. And how have you, you, you say, your organization have impacted the youth? You would, would you say? Not yes. Well, or the people in this community? Yeah, I've been working quite time, and uh, I see my result uh, within my community in terms of teaching the Arabic uh, language as a, you know, like second language for my community. Uh, for them to keep uh, their root, uh, even they are in America. They speak, um, uh, I mean, they speak English. They are Americans, but they still, you know, save their uh, inheritance, their culture, uh, where the parents, grandparents come from. And um, I'm a Muslim. I'm gonna, I want to help them to stay connected with. Um, the Arabic okay. language okay. to get them uh, to get them to what they the, the, the family want right. as a Muslim family okay. in terms of knowing what is the right things to do as a Muslim okay. what is the right thing to do as a Muslim within with peers with friends at school out of school in the house everywhere they go um, in terms of the women I try to empower the women, empower them, give them ASL classes, showing them what the right things to do, where to go to get help if they are abused or they are uh, someone, you know, like try to um, to harm them or something or they, they, some of them, they are scared, they're not adjusted. Tell them, get out of your box, go, ask questions, ask for help. We're here to help you. That's what we're here for you. These are some of the resources that you provide for these young ladies. Yes, definitely. Yes. Well, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, it was a You're welcome. It was a pleasure. The pleasure is, yes, is yes, for me. Yes. Thank you. Holidays. Thank you. Same okay. to you. Yes. Merry Christmas.